opportunity. Uh, I'll say, I would like to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Um, I'll start sharing my screen now. Please let me know if you can uh, see my screen. Okay. Yes, perfect. So, yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, today's uh, presentation topic for me is the healthcare in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. What kind of insights we can draw from patents uh, and how we can use patent analytics to find out the potential contributors to this um, emergency. Um, my name is Sharvani. I work as a consultant in LexisNexis patent site. Mm -hmm. My background is I have PhD in biochemistry with LLM in European IP and IT law. I assist my clients in using LexisNexis products in strategizing based on patents and searching and analytics in the how to bring the innovations and inventions uh, to the society. Today's topic is in, in context to COVID-19. Um, so uh, we already have come to know, but this is the foundation of it. Uh, the novel coronavirus that has been the reason of this recent pandemic, it belongs to the same family of viruses as the uh, SARS virus and the MERS virus. The disease it causes, it generally has mild symptoms, but it can lead to severe respiratory illnesses, which can result in death. It primarily, uh, we know it spreads through the saliva or the discharge from the nose um, when an infected person coughs or sneezes. This is the information that we had. Now the question is, um, how can uh, patent analytics help us in understanding how to address um, the current pandemic? Uh, this uh, kind of an analysis when we are doing for crisis response based on patents, the target is not to uh, go for all encompassing conventional patent search, but we want to get those patents that have disclosed explicitly the inventions that we are looking for, which can contribute directly and immediately to the crisis that we are facing due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The way we have searched for the patents for this purpose is we have searched for specific keywords that are directly related either to the, for example, in the vaccine case, directly related to the coronavirus family or related families that are known to have caused similar kind of infectious diseases. We search for those keywords in title or abstract or claims or combination of these in the patent documents. And we combine them with the IPC or CPC classification. IPC stands for International Patent Classification. CPC stands for Cooperative Patent Classification. These are the category of technologies to which patent documents are assigned to, to categorize them into the category, the group of technologies to which the invention, the patents are disclosing belong to. The totally unrelated patents that we retrieve because of this focused approach, we can exclude them using an and not operator on the IPC and the CPCs, which gives us totally unrelated patents. The hypothesis for doing this kind of a search, the expectation, it is that when we can retrieve these key patent owning entities, we are sure or we are confident that they have the know-how which can contribute to fight against the pandemic. Uh, and we claim that it is not always the quantity of patents owned by a patent owning entity that matters, it's also the quality. This particular uh, search and analytics has been done in LexisNexis patent site, which has uh, access to more than 100 million patent documents, not only English language documents, but also non-English documents. And then uh, when we assess them, we use the scientifically validated and patented methodology of LexisNexis patent site. I will discuss and show you the results um, in due course. What we expect is that this combination of search and analytics, which give us um, a key information about the potential that the patent owning entities may have to directly and immediately address the uh, emergency. Uh, for us, the quality is dependent on two factors. One is the forward citation. So uh, for a patent to get granted, it has to be proved that it is novel and the novelty and the inventiveness of a patent is are judged by the existing patents. So any patent that gets cited as a relevant prior art, the expectation is that patent is extremely relevant to the field it is uh, providing the invention in. 
That is one factor. So higher the citation, higher the quality of the patent as per our methodology. And next is the market coverage, the expanse of the protection of the patent. More the patent is important. Expectation is the interest will be more to protect it across the world. Based on these two factors, we have two indicators, what you call the average quality, which is the competitive impact, and the total portfolio strength quality, which is the patent asset index. When we retrieve the patents, we uh, adjust the quality of the patents based on these factors. Now let's uh, look into the specific topics and how we can derive the information that are relevant based on patent analytics. First is COVID-19 pandemic and genome sequencing and diagnostic tests. It's extremely important. We already have various articles. I have selected an article from the World Health Organization which tells us why it is so important. We have all come across news about these variants that are coming and the virus is constantly mutating itself. It's going forward um, with the new mutations to prevent itself from going extinct. And thus we have these variants. It is extremely important that these are uh, uh, identified early and they have helped um, in uh, uh, this has been able to, uh, this identification has been possible because of robust genomic surveillance. And obviously they have helped the countries to strategize accordingly. These are the uh, information we get from the World Health Organization about the variants of concern where the mutations are specifically denoted. Identifying these mutations can only be done immediately and very soon, very smoothly, if the genomic sequence is obtained. We all are aware of the RT-PCR tests that we all have to go through if we want to travel. If you want to prove that we are not infected by the COVID-19 virus, what it is done, it is based on the RT-PCR reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, typical genome sequencing reaction. Transcription generally means encoding mRNA from DNA. In this, it is reverse transcription because the nasal swab that is taken, expectation is that has the viral RNA. The corresponding DNA is sequenced from the RNA that is obtained from the nasal swab. So it is a reverse transcription and then PCR polymerase chain reaction is attempted on this DNA using this viral RNA specific, thus viral DNA specific primers. In case the nasal swab has the, uh, uh, the mRNA that is directly related to the virus, the PCR will work, hence the SARS-CoV-2 positive results is obtained. If it's, it's absent, the PCR won't work, and hence it is a negative result. This is the first example, concrete example of sequencing being used in identification of infectious, infected versus non-infected uh, patients. What patent analytics tells us, what we have done here is we have defined this field of patent, uh, uh, of uh, this field of next generation sequencing, uh, where we can understand what are the patents, who are the patent owning entities who have inventions protected legally through patents in this category. What you see here is the quality versus quantity. I already mentioned we not only take the quantity, but also the quality. So on the y-axis, you see the average quality of the uh, patent owning entities based on the patents that they have in this, in this field. Uh, the x-axis is the quantity, the number of patents they have in this field. And the bubble area is the total uh, strength of the patents based on our uh, KPIs. What you see here is we find not only pharmaceutical companies, but we also find biotech companies who have patents in this field. I have highlighted three. One is Illumina that has maximum number of patents here in the field that we have defined. And other is Gridstone Oncology and Oxford Nanopore Technologies. Now Gridstone Oncology uh, on the surface, it seems that this, is, uh, this can't be related. Um, even Oxford Nanopore Technology seems like they are next generation sequencing, might not be in direct sequencing, but let's look into the details what we get about uh, information about them. What we see here is Illumina was the first company to receive the FDA emergency authorization for sequencing based COVID-19 diagnostic kit. They have named is COVID CQ. Uh, Oxford Nanopore Technology collaborated with the UK government uh, with their kit, LAMPO, to provide diagnostic kits. 
uh, gridstone oncology, they are now considering, this is extremely relevant for today's time, the booster sequence where the potential variants can also be addressed. I have some news excerpts for you. Uh, so this is uh, June 2020 when Illumina got the first FDA uh, authorization to for their COVID seek test uh, kit. Uh, Oxford Nanopore made the deal with UK government. This is of, uh, August 2020. And we see that what they have also mentioned, and this is the effect of science, the effect of sequence, effect of invention, that they do not rely on the reagents that are required in the existing RT-PCR test. So even in the test, there is innovation so that there is less pressure on these RT-PCR kits because at one point of time, testing was the only way with, with which we, we were being able to address the crisis. As I said, Gridstone announced, this is 2021 news, that they have, not, they have, they have a trial for self-amplifying mRNA-based vaccine booster, which not only addresses spike protein, but also the conserved non-spike protein. Another good news, which I think is worth sharing, is uh, when uh, Oxford Nanopore made their uh, debut in the London Stock Exchange, they made a stellar debut. So based on, and this is 2021 news, so based on the innovation that they had, the contribution that they could make, their uh, debut was uh, very uh, well accepted. Moving ahead, not only was there a, a shortage of kits at one point of time, there were also PPEs that were required. There was extremely shortage of PPEs. Using the same uh, methodology, if you are trying to uh, find out those companies which have the know-how based on their explicit disclosure of inventions in the patent documents, if they, they can contribute, we use the same methodology. And if you look into the quality versus quantity chart, but here we find some of the companies which we generally don't expect, but they have been retrieved and they have been able to contribute as well. We find ExxonMobil here, we find Decathlon, we find Lubrizol, we find 3M and Resmed. Some of them Fisher and Bakel, some of them are known contributors, they have been contributing. Some of them are in the peripheral region of invention, but they came forward with their inventions to contribute. The information that you see is. ExxonMobil brought their polypropylene technology to supply the raw material for the assembly of face masks. And if you look into the patents that we retrieved, they're all based on this polypropylene technology. Uh, uh, Lubrizol, they brought their, their, this is their proprietary uh, uh, pro property, but they brought it to provide raw materials for PPEs. We also found uh, some other um, uh, companies like Decathlon and Safran. Decathlon is not at all related to PPEs. They make snorkeling face masks. Safran are related to aircrafts and seats and parachutes. But when we uh, check the news, uh, they have their know-how in this region. They teamed up together to provide uh, um, face masks for the medical workers fighting COVID-19. Uh, these are the news excerpts. This is found in the Excel mobile, uh, mobile homepage. As you can see, that they have joined the Global Center to expedite the medical innovation for personal protective equipment. And this is what uh, the news about safe, uh, Safran and uh, Decathlon's Easy Breed uh, tells us. This is the kind of face masks they have uh, started to make for the medical workers when there was a shortage of PPE. I cannot end this presentation without talking about the vaccines. Uh, when we started to look into uh, what, the, what we can understand from the uh, patterns related to vaccines, we find this is the filing statistics of patterns that are related to vaccine against viruses. Uh, each year, these many patterns were filed uh, for uh, regarding viruses uh, and vaccine against these. I would like to draw your attention to a few years. After all these that are marked, you see the succeeding year has a spike in the filing statistics uh, in the patents. All these uh, years are years of outbreak of SARS, other pandemic like bird flu, MERS, swine flu, Ebola, and recent COVID-19. All these things have one thing in common, which the World Health Organization has defined. This is zoonotic. These are all zoonotic diseases where the infectious disease jumps from non-human to um, animals to human. This is what we have seen. 
And based on this, when we try to find out if we can find the patent owning entities who already have been innovating and patenting in the region of antivirals in the, in the family of Corona and the other related virus families, we retrieve these patent owning entities, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, uh, Lee Generan, CureVac, uh, Pfizer, we also have Moderna. These are the top 20 based on our quality ranking. I'll give you one specific example, that of Johnson & Johnson. These are the specific patents that Johnson & Johnson uh, we retrieved based on our methodology. As you see, Johnson & Johnson has been inventing and patenting regarding the SARS-4, uh, uh, and this is 2005 and 2006 uh, patent. So they have been inventing, trying to bring vaccine in this, uh, uh, regarding this uh, virus. They were also uh, inventing and patenting in bringing adenovirus-based vaccines. So this is all. This is also 2005 uh, patent. If we check the vaccine that Johnson and Johnson has brought to the market, we see that this is based on SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, and this is based on an adenovirus vector. As you can see, this adenovirus AD26, AD26 has been patented and disclosed in the patent document uh, by Johnson and Johnson in 2005. My uh, intention was to let you know how uh, well patent analytics done in a way which is not conventional, but for crisis response can give you an indication uh, and early information about the potential patent owning entities that can come together to be able to use their know-how, their inventive uh, know-how into addressing crisis response. With this, I would like to conclude uh, my presentation. And